Most coaches know that children learn best when expectations are explained, demonstrated, and practiced in a positive atmosphere. This is especially true where there's a logical progression of skills suited to their skill level and needs. This introduction to body checking is a series of progressive drills developed by Hockey Canada to provide a sound curriculum for coaches to follow. Checking is a critical skill in hockey that when performed properly can create scoring opportunities or help a team regain control of the puck. Just like skating, puck control, passing and shooting, there are key progressions to the skill of checking. When these progressions are taught effectively, they can greatly enhance a player's enjoyment of the great game of hockey. A common misconception is that the skill of checking starts at a certain age or age category of play. In fact, checking is a four-step progression that begins the first time a young player steps onto the ice. Body checking is the fourth and final step of the four-step teaching progression. Remember coaches, if your players are able to grasp the fundamental skills of skating, positioning, angling and stick checks, they'll often be able to gain possession of the puck without making a body check. The number one reason that young people play the game is for fun. The number one element that their parents are looking for is fun within a safe and positive environment. You are a role model for your players. Teach them respect and skills in that kind of safe and positive environment and you'll always be successful as a coach. Most coaches know that children learn best when expectations are explained, demonstrated and practiced in a positive atmosphere. This is especially true where there's a logical progression of skills suited to their skill level and needs. This introduction to body checking is a series of progressive drills developed by Hockey Canada to provide a sound curriculum for coaches to follow. Checking is a critical skill in hockey that when performed properly can create scoring opportunities or help a team regain control of the puck. Just like skating, puck control, passing and shooting, there are key progressions to the skill of checking. When these progressions are taught effectively, they can greatly enhance a player's enjoyment of the great game of hockey. A common misconception is that the skill of checking starts at a certain age or age category of play. In fact, Checking is a four-step progression that begins the first time a young player steps onto the ice. Body checking is the fourth and final step of the four-step teaching progression. Remember coaches, if your players are able to grasp the fundamental skills of skating, positioning, angling and stick checks, they'll often be able to gain possession of the puck without making a body check. The number one reason that young people play the game is for fun. The number one element that their parents are looking for is fun within a safe and positive environment. You are a role model for your players. Teach them respect and skills in that kind of safe and positive environment and you'll always be successful as a coach. Hockey Canada's Player Development Pyramid has been designed as a guideline to help every amateur coach in Canada develop their seasonal plans no matter what age or skill level they're coaching. Within this pyramid, there are two different flows of progression that form these guidelines. The first progression is based on the different skills that players need to learn, working from technical skills at the base of the pyramid to individual tactics, then team tactics, team play systems, and finally, strategy at the peak. The second progression based on the age and skill level of the team, flows diagonally from the initiation program at the bottom to novice, then atom, peewee, bantam, and finally midget. Now, let's go back and take a closer look at each of the levels in the first progression. At the bottom of the pyramid is the technical skills level. These are the fundamental skills that form the foundation of every player's development in the game of hockey. Encompassed within this level are the skills of skating, puck control, shooting and scoring, 
and checking. After demonstrating the ability to execute the technical skills, players can then progress to the next level, individual tactics, where they begin to develop their read and react skills, otherwise known as hockey sense. As we move up the pyramid, we see that players begin performing drills to develop their understanding of team tactics and team play systems. In both levels, players learn how to apply their individual skills and hockey sense to a team game. At the peak of the pyramid is strategy, where teams learn styles of play to combat the opposition. Coaches determine these strategies based on their own philosophy, the age of the players, and the skill level of the team. As players become older and the competitive level increases, more complex game strategies can be taught. With a better understanding of how the first progression works, let's now integrate it with the second progression. Together, they show the amount of time throughout the year that coaches should devote to various skills during practices, based on the age and skill level of the players. At the base of the second progression is the initiation program. Because players at this level are very young and just learning the game, Hockey Canada recommends that most of the season's practices be devoted to the fundamental skills. As shown here by the pie chart, 85% of the year should be spent on developing the team's technical skills, with the other 15% allocated to individual tactics. When players reach the novice level, coaches can add drills to introduce team tactics. Note that technical skills now reduces to 75% of the year's practices. Individual tactics stays at 15%, and the remaining 10% is now allocated to team tactics. At the atom level, Hockey Canada recommends reducing the amount of time that players practice technical skills to 50%, while increasing individual tactics to 20%, and increasing team tactics to 15%. Players should also begin to learn team play systems. 10% of their practice time should be allocated to these skills, with the remaining 5% used to introduce the concepts of strategy. For the levels of Pee Wee, Bantam and Midget, practices should focus on reinforcing the technical skills with a more balanced approach while also teaching a variety of individual and team skills. For the Pee Wee program, 45% of practice time throughout the year should be devoted to technical skills, 25% to individual tactics, 10% to team tactics, 10% to team play, and 10% to strategy. The recommendation for Bantam is to spend 40% on technical skills, 15% on individual tactics, 20% on team tactics, 15% on team play, and 10% on strategy. And finally, at the midget level, Hockey Canada recommends 35% be devoted to technical skills, 15% to individual tactics, 20% to team tactics, 15% to team play, and 15% to strategy. It's important to note here that all players will develop at different rates. Coaches will have to assess players individually to ensure that each receives the attention and direction needed to sufficiently develop their skills before advancing to the next level. Hockey Canada's Player Development Pyramid has been designed as a guideline to help every amateur coach in Canada develop their seasonal plans, no matter what age or skill level they're coaching. Within this pyramid, there are two different flows of progression that form these guidelines. The first progression is based on the different skills that players need to learn, working from technical skills at the base of the pyramid to individual tactics, then team tactics, team play systems, and finally, strategy at the peak. The second progression, based on the age and skill level of the team, flows diagonally from the initiation program at the bottom to novice, then atom, 
peewee, bantam, and finally midget. Now, let's go back and take a closer look at each of the levels in the first progression. At the bottom of the pyramid is the technical skills level. These are the fundamental skills that form the foundation of every player's development in the game of hockey. Encompassed within this level are the skills of skating, puck control, shooting and scoring, and checking. After demonstrating the ability to execute the technical skills, players can then progress to the next level, individual tactics, where they begin to develop their read and react skills, otherwise known as hockey sense. As we move up the pyramid, we see that players begin performing drills to develop their understanding of team tactics and team play systems. In both levels, players learn how to apply their individual skills and hockey sense to a team game. At the peak of the pyramid is strategy, where teams learn styles of play to combat the opposition. Coaches determine these strategies based on their own philosophy, the age of the players, and the skill level of the team. As players become older and the competitive level increases, more complex game strategies can be taught. With a better understanding of how the first progression works, let's now integrate it with the second progression. Together, they show the amount of time throughout the year that coaches should devote to various skills during practices, based on the age and skill level of the players. At the base of the second progression is the initiation program. Because players at this level are very young and just learning the game, Hockey Canada recommends that most of the season's practices be devoted to the fundamental skills. As shown here by the pie chart, 85% of the year should be spent on developing the team's technical skills, with the other 15% allocated to individual tactics. When players reach the novice level, coaches can add drills to introduce team tactics. Note that technical skills now reduces to 75% of the year's practices. Individual tactics stays at 15%, and the remaining 10% is now allocated to team tactics. At the atom level, Hockey Canada recommends reducing the amount of time that players practice technical skills to 50%, while increasing individual tactics to 20%, and increasing team tactics to 15%. Players should also begin to learn team play systems. 10% of their practice time should be allocated to these skills, with the remaining 5% used to introduce the concepts of strategy. For the levels of Pee Wee, Bantam and Midget, practices should focus on reinforcing the technical skills with a more balanced approach while also teaching a variety of individual and team skills. For the Pee Wee program, 45% of practice time throughout the year should be devoted to technical skills, 25% to individual tactics, 10% to team tactics, 10% to team play, and 10% to strategy. The recommendation for Bantam is to spend 40% on technical skills, 15% on individual tactics, 20% on team tactics, 15% on team play, and 10% on strategy. And finally, at the midget level, Hockey Canada recommends 35% be devoted to technical skills, 15% to individual tactics, 20% to team tactics, 15% to team play, and 15% to strategy. It's important to note here that all players will develop at different rates. Coaches will have to assess players individually to ensure that each receives the attention and direction needed to sufficiently develop their skills before advancing to the next level.
just think it's important to have young people, whether it be male or female, to get exposed to different things. And I think that uh, your hockey camp should start. I mean, I know these guys start in June, July, and they have to get picked for their team, and there's pressure, and there's this and that. I, I just don't think that should it happen that way. Is it going to change? Probably not, because that's just the way it is. But I think that they need to be uh, exposed to different things. It gives their muscles a chance to develop. It gives their mind a chance to stay rested. It's like anything else in life. If you're not fresh and ready to do something, you're not going to excel at it. And I think too much hockey can sometimes be uh, counterproductive. I think you have to, you have to think what uh, is best for the players. And I think the only reason, the only way you can find out what's best for the players is by getting to know your players and finding out what the group needs and what they need, not only tactically but. Uh, emotionally as well whether they need a fun practice or a teaching practice or a hard practice and, and I think you get those reads by knowing your players and you have to you have to get to know your players uh, and uh, find out what makes them tick. I think one of the things that's probably uh, misused a little bit is uh, when you're working on quality practice time there's no substitution for scrimmaging or game like situations. I think that uh, if you want players to work in a game-like atmosphere and perform under game-like situations, you've got to put them in there. I think we, we, we all have access to a number of drill books, quality practice plans, everything, but uh, creativity is through scrimmaging and I don't think at times we give enough time for uh, that type of performance where you, the players are allowed to play the game of hockey uh, in an atmosphere that then leads into actual competition. So I think sometimes we spend a little bit too much time working on the drills and not allowing uh, the focus of the actual competition to be practiced too. So if I had any suggestion, it would be to put uh, game like competition and scrimmage into every practice that you plan. Looking back on, on my childhood, I was very fortunate to, to have a lot of support uh, from my mom and, and my grandparents and my, and my dad um, to making the game fun, just to, to coming and, and to being in the game and cheering me on and having support in the stands. And um, I think, you know, I look back, one of the things I cherish the most is that my family really never told me when I was younger that I had a bad game. I mean, I knew I had a bad game. Um, you know, I'd like to score goals and get points, and we'd like to win and, and things, but uh, they were just really very positive, and, and um, they let the coaches tell me those things. And, um, you know, I look back, I can appreciate no matter what, my mom just, you know, no matter how the game went, good game, you know? And, and I remember arguing with her sometimes, and I didn't have a good game, but, you know, it was nice that she thought of that way and, and just came as a, a positive influence and uh, just there to cheer me on. I think it's really imperative a couple things that, one, you're very supportive of your child. Uh, kids love to look in the stands and see their mom and dad at practice or a game. Whether you're six years old or 26 playing in the NHL, we all love that. Um, I think that it's really imperative that you don't make your kids practice, that kids have to enjoy it and think they're uh, in love with it and that's what their focus is. And then the other side of it is, Burnout. Like I'm really nervous that kids who play 12 months a year, uh, hockey is meant to be played for nine months. Play it as hard as you can, enjoy it, love it. And then other things that you can do in that, that off time, uh, whether it's baseball, track and field, lacrosse, will all be beneficial for your hockey career. Um, and I think if you take those factors, uh, you'll enjoy it as a parent and the child will love it. It's important to have young people, whether it be male or female, to get exposed to different things. And I think that uh, your hockey camp should start. I mean, I know these guys start in June, July, and they have to get picked for their team, and there's pressure, and there's this and that. I, I just don't think that should it happen that way. Is it going to change? Probably not, because that's just the way it is. But I think that they need to be uh, exposed to different things. It gives their muscles a chance to develop. It gives their mind a chance to stay rested. 
It's like anything else in life. If you're not fresh and ready to do something, you're not going to excel at it. And I think too much hockey can sometimes be uh, counterproductive. I think you have to you have to think what uh, is best for the players. And I think the only reason, the only way you can find out what's best for the players is by getting to know your players and finding out what the group needs and what they need, not only tactically but. Uh, emotionally as well whether they need a fun practice or a teaching practice or a hard practice and I think you get those reads by knowing your players and you have to you have to get to know your players uh, and uh, find out what makes them tick. I think one of the things that's probably uh, misused a little bit is uh, when you're working on quality practice time there's no substitution for scrimmaging or game like situations. I think that uh, if you want players to work in a game-like atmosphere and perform under game-like situations, you've got to put them in there. I think we, we, we all have access to a number of drill books, quality practice plans, everything, but uh, creativity is through scrimmaging and I don't think at times we give enough time for uh, that type of performance where you, the players are allowed to play the game of hockey uh, in an atmosphere that then leads into actual competition. So I think sometimes we spend a little bit too much time working on the drills and not allowing uh, the focus of the actual competition to be practiced too. So if I had any suggestion, it would be to put uh, game like competition and scrimmage into every practice that you plan. Looking back on, on my childhood, I was very fortunate to, to have a lot of support uh, from my mom and, and my grandparents and my, and my dad um, to making the game fun, just to, to coming and, and to being in the game and cheering me on and having support in the stands. And um, I think, you know, I look back, one of the things I cherish the most is that my family really never at, told me when I was younger that I had a bad game. I mean, I knew I had a bad game. Um, you know, I'd like to score goals and get points and we'd like to win and, and things, but uh, they were just really very positive and, and um, they let the coaches tell me those things. And, um, you know, I look back, I can appreciate no matter what, my mom just, you know, no matter how the game went, good game, you know? And, and I remember arguing with her sometimes and I didn't have a good game, but, you know, it was nice that she thought of that way and, and just came as a, a positive influence and uh, just there to cheer me on. I think it's really imperative a couple of things that, one, you're very supportive of your child. Uh, kids love to look in the stands and see their mom and dad at practice or a game. Whether you're six years old or 26 playing in the NHL, we all love that. Um, I think that it's really imperative that you don't make your kids practice, that kids have to enjoy it and think they're uh, in love with it and that's what their focus is. And then the other side of it is, Burnout. Like I'm really nervous that kids who play 12 months a year, uh, hockey is meant to be played for nine months, play it as hard as you can, enjoy it, love it. And then other things that you can do in that, that off time, uh, whether it's baseball, track and field, lacrosse, will all be beneficial for your hockey career. Um, and I think if you take those factors, uh, you'll enjoy it as a parent and the child will love it. Okay. What was the question again? Hi, my name is Brett. My favorite hockey player. No, I play right lead. No, left side. I screwed up. These drills have helped me because. So say what? Like some of the. What was I gonna say? My name is Carson. Hi, my name is Carson Samaridini. I'm nine years old. Oh, and I play forward right wing. My, my, ah, my, my, my name is Wivan Ost, Wivan Ost, Ost. I'm proud to wear this jersey because it makes me proud. Oh, I forgot what I had to say. Oh, this is hard. You gotta go on TV and it's really fun. 
try not to give you any outtakes. Come on, démarrer, répète. Mastering these techniques requires a lot of practice and deliberate repetition. Repetition. Un patinateur. Un patinateur. <laughs> For safety reasons, the stop, I was going to fold my arms. Let's go. <laughs> For safety reasons. <laughs> de s'exercer à de nouveaux mouvements. Balance is essential to the... <laughs> you come closer here. De prendre une longue... Oh, that was, I just screwed up on one. Everybody likes to see that red light, though. Ah! He screwed me up with that change in the pronunciation of the word. I'm oh, sorry, I think I'm getting tired. It'll help you better understand. Ah! <laughs> that was funny. Thanks, Vicky. Smitty! Smitty! <clears throat> Dave apparently has a little bit of a fling going on, and uh, Dave was uh, uh, did a guest appearance on the Smooch Cam. They brought out the big heart on the billboard, and uh, yeah, I think. Dave actually, well, she had a helmet on, but I think he kind of stuck his tongue in her ear or something like that. I'm not sure. It wasn't quite an official smooch because she had the cage on, which is probably good for her. Smitty, you over here, bud. Yeah, you're going to get me in the corner? Okay, yeah, Farles, you're the boy. You're the guy. Farley, okay. Can you do this now? <laughs> okay, let's see if he does it. Stay off that stuff. Look out, look out!
8, 10, 12 years old, they'll learn to deal. I mean, uh, certainly my mom and dad told me early on that I wasn't good enough to make it to the NHL, so uh, we all need a reality check once in a while, and hopefully they'll they'll learn to wear loud shorts in the future as well. We have a podcast. All around like this, okay. Well, yesterday he had the red shorts, the red shirt, and that uh, that crazy uh, overshirt he had on. The only thing he was missing was the big red clown shoes, and then we had a perfect outfit. When we've asked people sort of what's been their maybe scariest moment, like a couple kids said green shorts. <laughs> Those shorts, yeah, we're going to try and uh, maybe steal from them and get rid of after the shoot here so it doesn't happen again. <laughs> yeah, pretty, it's too bright, eh? That's nice. Um, Dean, it, it's his hockey is like his fashion sense. Like, it's way out there. Dean shorts were the, uh, probably the thing that will give you the most nightmares for this week, I guess. It was scary, all right. I'm a terrible dancer anyway, so don't worry. Again. Hi, my name is Brett. My favorite hockey player. No, I play right lead. No, left side. I screwed up. These drills have helped me because. So say what? Like some of the. What was I gonna say? My name is Carson. Hi, my name is Carson Samaridini. I'm nine years old. Oh, and I play forward right wing. My my ah, my, my, my name is Whit Van Ost. Whit Van Ost. Ost. I am proud to wear this jersey because it makes me proud. Oh, I forgot what I had to say. Oh, this is hard. You gotta go on TV and it's really fun. I'm trying not to give you any outtakes. Mastering these techniques requires a lot of practice and deliberate repetition. Repetition. For safety reasons, the stop, I was going to fold my arms. Let's go. For safety reasons. The exercise at the nouveau move. Balance is essential to the. Keep <laughs> You come closer here. De prendre une longueur. Oh, I was I screwed up on one. Everybody likes to see that red light though. Ah, he screwed me up with that change in the pronunciation of the word. I'm oh, sorry. I think I'm getting tired. It'll help you better understand. Ah, oh. <laughs> that was funny.
need your legs, Vicky. Smitty! Smitty! <clears throat> Dave apparently has a little bit of a fling going on, and uh, Dave was uh, uh, did a guest appearance on the Smooch Cam. They brought out the big heart on the billboard, and uh, yeah, I think Dave actually, well, she had a helmet on, but I think he kind of stuck his tongue in her ear or something like that. I'm not sure. It wasn't quite an official Smooch because she had the cage on, which is probably good for her. Smitty, you over here, bud. Yeah, you can take you can be in the corner. Okay, yeah, Farles, you're the boy. You're the guy. Farley, okay. Can you do this now? <laughs> okay, let's see if he does it. years old they'll learn to deal I mean uh, certainly my mom and dad told me early on that I wasn't good enough to make it to the NHL so uh, we all need a reality check once in a while and hopefully they'll they'll learn to wear loud shorts in the future as well all around like this okay well yesterday he had the red shorts the red shirt and that uh, that crazy uh, overshirt he had on the only thing he was missing was the big red clown shoes and then we had a perfect outfit when we've asked people sort of what's been their maybe scariest moment like a couple of kids said green shorts <laughs> those shorts yeah we're going to try and uh, maybe steal from them get rid of after this shoot here so it doesn't happen again <laughs> yeah, you're it's too bright eh yes, thanks. Um, Dean, it's his hockey is like his fashion sense, like it's way out there. Dean shorts were the uh, probably the thing that'll give you the most nightmares for this week, I guess. <laughs> it was scary, all right. I'm a terrible dancer anyway, so don't worry.
Okay, good. Okay, one more take, uh, Corey. Exactly the same thing. You did a great job. We're just repeating a different angle. Quick slate, everybody. Good. And action. When we first sat down back in February and March and said, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, come up to Edmonton and we're going to shoot the, the skills video. As we started getting into this with meetings and conference calls and looking at the amount of work that was necessary to put together, you know, 385 uh, different skills or shots that we were going to take, uh, you know, it was a lot of work in actually a short amount of time. When the initial uh, suggestion came from Bob Nicholson, our president, he said, uh, you know what, we need to invest in the resources that uh, we provide for coaches across Canada. So uh, whatever it takes in terms of uh, your staff time and resources to uh, pay attention to this project. And then our team got together with Michael and Christy and we just started mapping it out. It's a huge project. It's a project that's going to go on probably for a couple of years, uh, two more years after this by the time we're done everything. But uh, look at the amount of dollars that are being invested into helping coaches become better, which is going to help kids come better. Uh, the reality of the whole thing is it's definitely worthwhile. And uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of hours, but uh, it's probably been the best project that I've been involved with at, at Hockey Canada uh, since I've been here. It's been awesome, like you get to learn all these new things and you wouldn't even think of some of the little things that matter. Sometimes when you see, you know, instructional hockey videos made, you wonder, you know, what goes on behind the cameras and stuff. So you get to see how it's really done, so it's pretty neat. I'm just taking care of the tapes here. As you can see, writing down the numbers. 20 tapes a day times or eight or nine days. That's a lot of tapes. You know, it's a decent crew. Everybody's uh, really good to work with, you know, having a good time. How are you? Pretty good. What's your name? Bronson. Bronson? Dylan, how are you doing? How you doing, Charlie? Hi. How are you doing? Good. Good. You guys get to shoot at least, or just drills? Uh, a couple. Oh, just right on the ice. There's only 14 buildings in the National Hockey League that have won Stanley Cups. I think the very first night, you know, some of the Oilers uh, coaching staff dropped by with Craig Simpson and Charlie Huddy, and then the kids get an opportunity to ask them questions, and, you know, and a lot of them would never get that opportunity otherwise. And some of the guys like uh, George LaRock and Ryan Smith, uh, they gave uh, a lot of good messages. No, Donnie said it's been going good out here, and uh, that's great, but uh, obviously playing for your country is, uh, is quite an honor. It's going to be tough to, to swallow, but uh, I'm going to be sitting there uh, retired sitting watching you guys play and uh, hopefully winning gold for us too. So, uh... you know, Ryan Smith coming in talking to the kids about not only what it takes to be a great hockey player but you know life skills and you know attitude towards things uh, was really a huge bonus for the kids. So, you know getting pictures taken with them and you know autographs and all that stuff it was a pretty big deal. That's awesome. Probably great right there now. Thanks. Cool. What's your favorite part so far? Probably meeting like George the Rock and Ryan Smith. It's good to meet people that you see on TV and talk to them for a while and get their autograph? Um, probably when Ryan Smith came out today and because he's like my favorite player. It was when this the camera guy, Dave, he fell on the ice. Yeah, Dave. He's the only guy to fall actually so far on the ice. Going out for the freestyle breakaways, taking a breakaway on the goalie out there. Working on a project that big, you know, every day we came, everyone was just happy to be there all the time. On day two, when we had our little lunch break, uh, the little guy decided that he was going to have a big bowl of chili, and uh, the chili found its way down the front of his white jersey, and we had to replace it. But we certainly uh, found a nickname that stuck, and uh, we even saw mom and dad calling him chili at the end of the shoot, so it was pretty good. <laughs> You know, the big kids are calling the little guys by their nicknames, the little guys are calling us by our nicknames, and it's, uh, it seems like we've 
that's you know it seems like we've been here for longer than eight or nine days but at the same time eight or nine days has flown by like it's gone by so fast tacky t-shirt day today yeah why don't you ask the camera guy what he's wearing Hockey Canada and all their wisdom has a, uh, a shirt. It's the uh, sort of the Hawaiian Hockey Canada shirt, and it's black and red, and it's got our logo all over it. So uh, I wore that yesterday with my red cl clown shorts and uh, the big red shoes and the uh, the hat going on. So uh, today I walk in, and all of the staff uh, and the camera crew right on down have their Hawaiian shirts on, their tacky shirts, the sequins, everything else going. So they look great. It's great to see them. Uh, I have a howl every time I look at them. Brightens the day, so it's great. Hockey players get to decide who has the tackiest shirt. Keith Hall, CBC, Retro, with the beer shirt. And then we have uh, Super Dave. So all hands for Keith. Who likes Keith? Okay, and for Dave? Dave wins! You know, during the, the downtimes, uh, the camera guys and, and different people, you know, the producers and editors and everyone were grabbing sticks and pucks and, and learning a lot of the skills that the kids were doing. And some of the kids were even spent some time teaching them how to do it. And some of the stuff is pretty hard. And to see production people out on the ice in their sneakers and scooping pucks and doing different things was just, yeah! that's pretty neat to see. I'm in charge of slates and snacks. It's pretty exciting. I've been drawing all sorts of pictures and cartoons and stick men. Oh. I think that um, when you shoot for, you know, eight hours straight, um, the time goes by really fast because everything's marked by the next slate you're waiting to see and uh, the creative way in which she does it, so it's real good. You know, at, at first I never really noticed the slates. I took time to look at them because, you know, you just read it saying what the shot was going to be and what was coming up and then... All of a sudden, you take a quick look up at the jumbotron, and you look over, and the little drawings and the diagrams were actually pretty creative. It's another one of those little things that made it a great activity to be involved in. One more take, uh, Corey. Exactly the same thing. You did a great job. We're just repeating a different angle. Quick slate, everybody. Good. And action. When we first sat down back in February and March and said, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, come up to Edmonton and we're going to shoot the, the skills video. As we started getting into this with meetings and conference calls and looking at the amount of work that was necessary to put together, you know, 385 uh, different skills or shots that we were going to take, uh, you know, it was a lot of work and actually a short amount of time. When the initial uh, suggestion came from Bob Nicholson, our president, he said, uh, you know what, we need to invest in the resources that uh, we provide for coaches across Canada. So uh, whatever it takes in terms of uh, your staff time and resources to uh, pay attention to this project. And then our team got together with Michael and Christy and we just started mapping it out. It's a huge project. It's a project that's going to go on probably for a couple of years, uh, two more years after this by the time we're done everything. But 
Look at the amount of dollars that are being invested into helping coaches become better, which is going to help kids come better. Uh, the reality of the whole thing is it's definitely worthwhile. And uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of hours, but uh, it's probably been the best project that I've been involved with at, at Hockey Canada uh, since I've been here. It's been awesome. Like, you get to learn all these new things, and you wouldn't even think of some of the little things that matter. Sometimes when you see, you know, instructional hockey videos made, you wonder, you know, what goes on behind the cameras and stuff. So you get to see how it's really done, so it's pretty neat. Uh, I'm just taking care of the tapes here. As you can see, writing down the numbers. 20 tapes a day times or eight or nine days. That's uh, a lot of tapes. You know, it's a decent crew. Everybody's uh, really good to work with, you know, having a good time. How are you? Pretty good. What's your name? Bronson. Bronson? Dylan, how are you doing? Good. How you doing, Charlie? Hi. How are you doing? Good. Good. You guys get to shoot at least, or just drills? Uh, a couple. Oh, straight on. Yeah, nice. There's only 14 buildings in the National Hockey League that have won Stanley Cups. I think the very first night, you know, some of the Oilers uh, coaching staff dropped by with Craig Simpson and Charlie Huddy, and then the kids get an opportunity to ask them questions, and, you know, and a lot of them would never get that opportunity otherwise. And some of the guys like uh, George LaRock and Ryan Smith, uh, they gave uh, a lot of good messages. No, Donnie said it's been going good out here, and uh, that's great. But uh, obviously playing for your country is, uh, is quite an honor. It's going to be tough to, to swallow, but uh, I'm going to be sitting there uh, retired. <laughs> Sitting watching you guys play and uh, hopefully winning gold for us too. So, uh... you know, Ryan Smith coming in talking to the kids about not only what it takes to be a great hockey player, but you know life skills and you know attitude towards things uh, was really a huge bonus for the kids. So, you know, getting pictures taken with them and you know autographs and all that stuff. It was a pretty big deal. That's awesome. Probably great right there now. Thanks. You're What's your favorite part so far? Probably meeting like George the Rock and Ryan Smith. It's good to meet people that you see on TV and talk to them for a while and get their autograph? Um, probably when Ryan Smith came out today and because he's like my favorite player. It was when this the camera guy, Dave, he fell on the ice. Yeah, Dave. He's the only guy to fall actually so far on the ice. Going out for the freestyle breakaways, taking a breakaway on the goalie out there. Working on a project that big, you know, every day we came, everyone was just happy to be there all the time. On day two, when we had our little lunch break, uh, the little guy decided that he was going to have a big bowl of chili, and uh, the chili found its way down the front of his white jersey, and we had to replace it. But we certainly uh, found a nickname that stuck, and uh, we even saw mom and dad calling him chili at the end of the shoot, so it was pretty good. <laughs> You know, the big kids are calling the little guys by their nicknames, the little guys are calling us by our nicknames, and it's, uh, it seems like we've, it's, you know, it seems like we've been here for longer than eight or nine days, but at the same time, the eight or nine days has flown by like it's gone by so fast. Tacky t-shirt day today. Yeah, why don't you ask the camera guy what he's wearing? Hockey Canada, in all their wisdom, has a, uh, a shirt, it's the, uh, sort of the Hawaiian Hockey Canada shirt, and it's black and red, and it's got our logo all over it, so, uh, I wore that yesterday with my red cl clown shorts and uh, the big red shoes and the uh, the hat going on. So uh, today I walk in and all of the staff uh, and the camera crew right on down have their Hawaiian shirts on, their tacky shirts, the sequins, everything else going. So they look great. It's great to see them. Uh, I have a howl every time I look at them. Brightens the day, so it's great. Hockey players get to decide who has the tackiest shirt. Keith Holt, CBC, retro with the beer shirt. And then we have uh, Super Dave. <laughs> so all hands for Keith. Who likes Keith? Okay, and for Dave. Uh, Dave wins. Hey. <laughs> hey, <Keith. laughs> During the, the downtimes, uh, the camera guys and, and different people, you know, the producers and editors and everyone were grabbing sticks and pucks and, and learning a lot of the skills that the kids were doing. And some of the kids were even spent some time teaching them how to do it. And some of the stuff is pretty hard. 
and to see production people out on the ice in their sneakers and scooping pucks and doing different things was just yeah! that was pretty neat to see. I'm in charge of slates and snacks. It's pretty exciting. I've been drawing all sorts of pictures and cartoons and stick men. Oh. I think that um, when you shoot for, you know, eight hours straight, um, the time goes by really fast because everything's marked by the next slate you're waiting to see and uh, the creative way in which she does it, so it's real good. You know, at, at first I never really noticed the slates. I took time to look at them because, you know, you just read it saying what the shot was going to be and what was coming up and then all of a sudden you take a quick look up at the jumbotron and you look over and the little drawings and the diagrams were actually pretty creative. It's another one of those little things that made it a great activity to be involved in. The skill demonstrations included in this DVD have been performed by players of varying age groups. Younger players will appear to have more difficulty because many of them may lack the experience and development necessary to execute these drills and maneuvers as easily and proficiently as older, more accomplished players. This is intended to help make coaches more aware of just what the reasonable expectations of players of different ages and abilities should be. The skill demonstrations included in this DVD have been performed by players of varying age groups. Younger players will appear to have more difficulty because many of them may lack the experience and development necessary to execute these drills and maneuvers as easily and proficiently as older, more accomplished players. This is intended to help make coaches more aware of just what the reasonable expectations of players of different ages and abilities should be. Positioning and angling is the first in the four-step progression. Positioning, such as controlled skating, feet shoulder width apart, head up and stick on the ice, develop good angling skills. Angling is a technique of checking that doesn't require contact with another player. Okay, hockey players, today what we're going to talk about right now is the skating stance and the proper standing stance so you can make sure that you're the best skater you can possibly be. The most important thing when you're starting out is to have a good solid stance. If you look at Corey right now, he's not really ready to play hockey. So the first thing he's going to do is get comfortable on his skates, good width, they're not too close together, not too far apart. He's not going to have straight legs, he's going to bend his knees. We're going to ask him to put two hands on the stick so he's got a nice solid base. He's nice and solid in here and he's nice and strong on his stick. So what we're going to have you hockey players do is spread out over here. We want to look at your stance. We want to look at your skating. We're going to ask you to do some different things. But all the time, get back into the good, proper hockey stance. Head up. Ready to go. Everyone pretty solid? OK. Heads up. OK, you just scored a goal. Hockey stance. Good. This time, I'm going to ask you to fall on the ice and get back up in a hurry. Fall. Get back up. Good, everyone pretty solid. That's the way, good. Okay, this time I'm gonna ask you to skate, stop, and go back to your spots. Ready, go. That's the way. Okay, good job hockey players. Let's all get back down here and get on one knee again. Hockey players, we're gonna work on a drill now that incorporates good positioning. We wanna be on the defensive side of the player which means we want to be between the player and our net. That's going to be our net there. 
and we always want to protect the ice, the middle of the ice. So what's going to happen in this drill, it's the mirror drill. Corey's going to be along the boards and I'm going to be mirroring him. I'm going to try to stay slightly ahead of him so I'm protecting my net and I'm going to use my stick. I'm going to have good solid base on my skates. I'm going to have my head up and looking at him and we're going to try to do a good job so I'm able to close on him. Good. Good, really good. Hockey players, we're going to work on a drill now where we worry about and we concern ourselves with our positioning. Corey's going to be in the corner with the puck. He's going to be trying to eventually score on the goaltender. I'm going to be the defender. What I want to do is I want to keep Corey in the corner. I want to contain him. I want to make sure that I've got good positioning so he doesn't want to try to score. He doesn't want to come to the net. I've got to make sure that I've got my stick in front or to the side so I can prevent him from going to the net. Your skates have to be solid. You have to be looking at him so you know what he's going to do. Then, when the coach yells, when I yell, you try to take it to the net and score. Go! Just contain, contain, yeah. Go! Good job, great job. Okay, that's it. In checking, it's important that you get a good angle. And we're gonna work on an angle drill here where the puck's gonna be in the corner, the player with the puck is gonna go get it and try to come up the boards with it. The player who's defending, we want you to get in on that player who's got the puck. You have to close the gap quickly, you have to get there in a hurry, but you have to be careful you don't go in a straight line. We want you to go in an arc, and we want you to get up beside them and skate beside them. So the important thing is, is that I've used my stick and I've used my body to try to guide Corey to where I want him to go. And eventually, I'll be able to either close him off on the boards and finish with a check, or he's gonna get rid of the puck. Go! Jump, 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 Reed. Get an angle, go, go get ahead of him. Good job. Players, what we're gonna work on now is our positioning as defenders in our own end. The way the drill's going to work is Corey's going to be on the other team. He's gonna be in the corner with the puck. I'm gonna be the defender. So I've gotta make sure I've got good body positioning. I've gotta make sure I'm strong on my skates. I've gotta make sure I've got an active stick moving side to side because Corey's also got a teammate who's gonna to try to get open. And I've gotta make sure that I do everything possible to prevent Corey from trying to pass that puck. Eventually, my teammates will come back and be able to help out, or Corey will mishandle the puck, and I'll be able to jump on him. Okay, Katie. Good job, Paul. That's the way to stay in the middle. Good active stick. Good, she doesn't want to pass. There you go, jump on it. Perfect. Okay, come on back here. That was a perfect example. Paul was in great position. And as soon as Katie happened to fumble with the puck or she lost her balance, Paul was able to jump and we were able to get the puck back. Good job, you guys and girls. Stick checks are very important skills that need to be mastered by players at a very early age. This is the second line of defense once players have learned to position themselves correctly and angle effectively. Hockey players, we want to talk about some stick checks now. What we want to talk about doing is, if Corey's got the puck, I want it. It's my puck, I want to get it from him. He's stick handling with it, so I've got to figure out a way to get it. The two ways we want you to practice with are called the lift, where you lift the stick up, or the press. Now, if Corey's got it, what I want to do is come in, lift his stick, and take the puck myself. And now I've got it. I've done my job, I've gotten the puck from him, now I'm able to do something. Now, if he's got it like this, the other thing I can do is I can press down on him, and now I've got the puck again. Now the two times you'll probably see those checks used the most is when you're along the boards and you're taking the player out, you can lift his stick and take it yourself, or you can press down and maybe your teammate can come in and get the puck. But either way, we want you to battle hard for the puck, we want you to decide how much you want it, and do everything you can to get it. Good job there, you guys. Okay, 
Okay, stop for a second, players. Now, this time, the player who's got the puck, you try to protect it, and the other player can try to take it any way he or she wants, lifting or pressing. Here we go. Boys and girls, we're going to talk now about poke checking the puck. What that means is that if the opponent has the puck, in this case Corey, what I want to try to do is knock the puck off his stick. Now this usually happens whether he's coming in on me on a one-on-one -on -one situation, whether I'm playing the rush, or possibly if Corey's in the corner and he's coming out at me. But it's when Corey's got good control, and what I want to be able to do is do everything possible to knock the puck off his stick. Now to do that, I can't be standing straight up. I've got to have good skate posture. My skates have to be solid. My legs have to be bent. I don't want my stick way out here because now I'm off balance. I don't want to be standing up here because I'm off balance. I want to be nice and comfortable. And as Corey starts to come in on me, what I can do is just poke check him. Just knock the puck off his stick. I've got it here. Let's say I try to poke check him, but he's still able to protect the puck. Because I'm not really overexerting myself, I'm still in good shape here to keep good position and good balance. The other thing that might happen off this is if Corey stays right in front of me, sure I can poke check him, but if he starts to go to the side, then I might have to sweep check him. And what I'll do there is he'll start to go to the side and I'll throw my stick out and sweep check him. We'll give you an example of Corey coming in on me from here. What I want to do is I want to make sure I've lined up my shoulders properly. My outside shoulder closest to the boards is lined up with his inside shoulder. So now as he's coming, he's coming in on me, my stick's out, I'm able to poke check him. He turns around and goes and gets it again, comes in on me again. I've got good gap. I can poke check him again, and I can sweep check it into the corner. Skating, positioning, and angling are all used to direct the puck carrier. Players use their sticks as an active line of defense in attempting to control their opponents. Once players have mastered these first two steps, they're ready to move on to the third step, body contact and contact confidence. Body contact is used to gain separation when a player positions his or her body between the puck and the puck carrier. Body contact must only result from the active movement of the puck carrier. Body contact is defined as an individual defensive tactic designed to legally block or impede the progress of an offensive puck carrier. It can be done anywhere on the ice through skating, angling, and positioning. The defensive player may not hit the offensive player by going in the opposite direction or by extending toward the offensive player in an attempt to initiate contact. There must be no action where the puck carrier is pushed, hit, or shoved into the boards. This step in the progression prepares players for incidental contact and helps them overcome the uncertainty and fear of body checking. Let's look at a progression of drills that show ways to teach and learn body contact and contact confidence. Guys, we're going to do a little drill now where we want you to get comfortable and confident in body contact. It's a fun part of the game when you do it right, and that's what we want to talk about right now. What we're going to do is we're going to lock elbows. You're going to keep your knees bent. You're going to get nice and low on them. And what you're going to do is you're going to pop up and just bump each other, getting a little harder each time. Okay? I'd like you guys to try that right now. Partner up. Don't be in a hurry. Really bend down. Get your legs good distance apart. Feel strong on your skates. Okay, bump each other a few times. Okay, good. Now we're going to do that along the goal line here and up center ice. Bump. Bump hard. Next, guys. Let's go. Get started. Not too fast, Reed. Nice and smooth. Go. Really bump now. Bend down. Bend down and explode into them. Good. Finish her off, guys, right to the end. Okay, guys, what we're going to do to start with this drill is have a little activity where we're going to protect the dot. The first way we're going to do it is one player is going to have the puck, and his object is to try to put the puck on the dot. The other player is going to defend. And when you're defending, we want you to make sure you keep some of the key teaching points in mind. 
Keep your stick in front of you. Try to avoid putting it to the side. Keep it in front of you. That way the guy's further away from you. Then you can always poke check him. You can direct him where you want to go. Have good balance with your legs. Keep a good stance and keep your eye on the player and at the same time you'll be able to see the puck through your peripheral vision. Watch again how Keller might move out to him, what we're trying to stress here. That's the way. Okay, here you go, Paul. Good, pop out again, Paul. Here you go. That's the way, Kellen. Okay, great job, guys. It's very important that players develop contact confidence before they move into body checking. Improving a young player's skating and stability on skates will go a long way in accomplishing that. What we're going to do here, players, is one player is going to skate along the boards with the puck and his or her opponent is going to come up beside them and just take the puck away from them. We want you to do this with good speed and we want to make sure that the puck carrier uh, protects the puck and the other person just takes it from them. Go hard. Go. Go hard, go hard. That's perfect. Go. Get past her, Taylor. Get it up past her. Good. Okay, that was good. What we want you to do is skate up beside your opponent and take the puck from them. And sometimes, even in leagues where there's not allowed to be body checking, you're going to be able to bump into people, and that happens sometimes. You guys did a good job. If there's incidental bumping or incidental contact, that's okay. The referee won't call that. That was well done. Body checking is the final step in the four-step checking progression. Now, a body check is defined as body contact primarily caused by the movement of the checker. This movement is usually in a different direction from that of the puck carrier. The checker uses his or her body to stop the attacking progress of the puck carrier and or separate the carrier from the puck. Now, you can see why the first three steps of the progression, which teach strong, controlled skating, plus good balance and approach angling, are so important in learning how to body check. Okay guys, the next drill we're going to do here is body contact and body checking and we're going to use the boards. We want you to imagine that you're playing against another player, but we're just going to use the boards as what we want to practice with. What you're going to do is get nice and low, get your leg low, and you're going to explode into the board and pin the player there. So your legs extending here to give you some force, and this one's nice and bent. So right here, you're looking up, and you're moving right into the boards. I'd like you guys to try it spreading out along here, and then we'll start moving up the boards doing it. Let's see you spread out. Get down nice and low. Explode into the boards. Good job. Okay, start going here, big guy. Nice, good pin. There we go. Go ahead. Good job, Ryan. boy, Chris. Get that leg nice and low. Good. Okay there, Reed. Good. Give him a good pop, Reed. Good. You guys did a real nice job with that. That's the way to get nice and low. That's the way to explode into there. That's the way to keep the guy pinned. Good job. Okay, guys, this time in this hitting drill, in this body contact drill, what you're going to do is you're going to take your partner out and you're going to hit him against the boards and hold him there for a second. So what we want you to do is get nice and low again and explode into your teammate here. Push with your outside leg, your inside leg's nice and bent, and I'm going to move right into Corey and I'm going to hold him there for a second. Okay, now this leg's got all the weight on it. It's pushing right in. Okay, and now if I'm Corey, Corey's not going to let me hit him. He wants to push back. He wants to push back and that's how he protects himself. So now, if we're doing it, Corey's going to push out and I'm going to push in and hopefully uh, I'll be able to hold him for a second. And then now, uh, we're in good position. I'd like you guys to try it. Let's have the white guys, the guys in the white jerseys hitting the guys in the dark jerseys. Okay, get down and do it right stationary, nice and low and hold him in there. Good, a couple more. Okay, this time do it in motion. Okay, Chris, take him in and push him and hold him. Good, hold him there, good. Go. Okay, good job, guys. Keep going, one more, go. That's a good job there. When you're taking the guy out, make sure you push, you hold him, and your outside leg's doing all the work. Good job. This drill here, guys, you're gonna take your partner out along the boards, 
and then once you've frozen them there for a second, you're going to roll and pin and keep him pinned on the boards. So the same principles apply, get nice and low, pin them on the boards and keep your stick on the ice because we always want you to be able to have to take the puck. So if I'm taking Corey, I'm going to move into him and then I'm going to roll him and now he's got his face to the boards and this is where all my weight is right in here. I've got my other knee in between his two legs because now if Corey wants to go whichever way, he can't move. He can't move. I've got him in good shape and my stick's loose so I want to get the puck. Pin him and then roll and get that leg in between. Make sure you get nice and low. One more time. Good. Okay, now do it going up the ice. Get two hits in there, big guy, and we'll go from there. Take him out, slide, roll him. Good. Okay, let him go again. Go. Good. That's a good job in keeping your stick on the ice, and that's a good job in getting low so you can explode into him. What'll work? Gentlemen, this drill we're gonna work on now is the shoulder check. What's going to happen is the one player is gonna skate forward, try to get by me on the boards, and it's my job to place my shoulder into his chest and give him a shoulder check. So as I'm skating backwards, I wanna have a good gap with Corey. I wanna make sure that I'm forcing him to go along the boards. I don't want him to cut out this way. And when I know for sure he's going to the boards, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop and explode into him, and then I'm gonna pin him on the boards. So now we're gonna start, we're going backwards, I see he's going that way, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna pin into him. And now I can keep him here for a second. Then I'll let him go, and we'll do it one more time. Okay, Ryan and Chris, let's get started. Good job, that's great, one more. Good job, guys, okay, next group. Explode into him, Paul, that's the way. Go by him, Kellen. Okay, good job, guys. Men, we're gonna talk about open ice checking now. What that means is we're not near the boards, we're in the open ice. First and most important thing is you've got good positioning. So if I'm gonna be defending against Corey, first thing I wanna do is make sure I'm not too far from him, so I've gotta have good gap. I've gotta be close enough to him where he can't get away from me by outskating me. I wanna line up his inside shoulder, which is the shoulder towards the middle of the ice. I wanna use my outside shoulder. That way, I can try to direct him to where I want him to go. If he starts to go to the outside, I can move with him, and then maybe I'll take him out on the boards. If he starts to move to the inside, I can protect myself by staying with my shoulder lined up. And then, when I get the chance, I'm gonna stop and try to stand him up with an open ice check. So the way we're gonna do the drill is I'm gonna back off, Corey's gonna come into me, I'm gonna move into him, and then he's gonna let me push him back just so we can get confidence in what it feels like to have your shoulder in his chest. Here we go. So Corey's coming into me, I'm in good position, I'm stopping, and now I'm gonna push him back, just so I can feel that way. Everyone will get a chance to do that, and the next step, now I'm gonna have an open ice check on him. So same thing, I line up my outside shoulder with his inside shoulder, we're coming back, he's coming in, I see that, I stop, and now I can hit him. I've got my legs bent, my back leg's got all the power, and I'm just trying to stand him up and knock him off the puck. Okay, Reed, Chandler, line up those shoulders. Good, push him back. Okay, good. Next two, Kellen, Paul. Good, push him back. Good, okay, here we go, let's go. Now we're gonna see an open ice check. Good job. Okay, good job, guys. Reed, let's see a good open ice check here, Chandler. Good, oh, okay, good job, guys. That was well done. You guys are turning into good checkers. Continuous drills are needed to help players build up their contact confidence. During body checking practices, emphasize these important points. Have players practice skating with a wide base and bent knees to put them in a strong position for checking. Keep the stick low. Lock the arm under the elbow. Take away the hands. Place knee between the legs. Use rear extension to control the attacker. The attacker's arms and shoulders should be turned into the boards with the chest pinned against the boards. Positioning and angling is the first in the four-step progression. 
positioning, such as controlled skating, feet shoulder width apart, head up and stick on the ice, develop good angling skills. Angling is a technique of checking that doesn't require contact with another player. Okay, hockey players, today what we're going to talk about right now is the skating stance and the proper standing stance so you can make sure that you're the best skater you can possibly be. The most important thing when you're starting out is to have a good solid stance. If you look at Corey right now, he's not really ready to play hockey. So the first thing he's going to do is get comfortable on his skates, good width, they're not too close together, not too far apart. He's not going to have straight legs, he's going to bend his knees. We're going to ask him to put two hands on the stick so he's got a nice solid base. He's nice and solid in here and he's nice and strong on his stick. So what we're going to have you hockey players do is spread out over here. We want to look at your stance. We want to look at your skating. We're going to ask you to do some different things. But all the time, get back into the good proper hockey stance. Head up. Ready to go. Everyone pretty solid? Okay. Heads up. Okay, you just scored a goal. Hockey stance. Good. This time, I'm going to ask you to fall on the ice and get back up in a hurry. Fall. Get back up. Good. Everyone pretty solid. That's the way. Good. Okay, this time I'm going to ask you to skate, stop, and go back to your spots. Ready? Go. That's the way. Okay, good job, hockey players. Let's all get back down here and get on one knee again. Hockey players, we're going to work on a drill now that incorporates good positioning. We want to be on the defensive side of the player, which means we want to be between the player and our net. That's going to be our net there. And we always want to protect the ice, the middle of the ice. So what's going to happen in this drill, it's the mirror drill. Corey's going to be along the boards, and I'm going to be mirroring him. I'm going to try to stay slightly ahead of him, so I'm protecting my net. And I'm going to use my stick. I'm going to have good solid base on my skates. I'm going to have my head up and looking at him. And we're going to try to do a good job so I'm able to close on him. Good. Good, really good. Hockey players, we're going to work on a drill now where we worry about and we concern ourselves with our positioning. Corey's going to be in the corner with the puck. He's going to be trying to eventually score on the goaltender. I'm going to be the defender. What I want to do is I want to keep Corey in the corner. I want to contain him. I want to make sure that I've got good positioning so he doesn't want to try to score. He doesn't want to come to the net. I've got to make sure that I've got my stick in front or to the side so I can prevent him from going to the net. Your skates have to be solid. You have to be looking at him so you know what he's going to do. Then. When the coach yells, when I yell, you try to take it to the net and score. Go! Just contain, contain, yeah. Go! Good job, great job. Okay, that's it. In checking, it's important that you get a good angle. And we're going to work on an angle drill here where the puck's going to be in the corner. The player with the puck is going to go get it and try to come up the boards with it. The player who's defending, we want you to get in on that player who's got the puck. You have to close the gap quickly, you have to get there in a hurry, but you have to be careful you don't go in a straight line. We want you to go in an arc, and we want you to get up beside them and skate beside them. So the important thing is, is that I've used my stick and I've used my body to try to guide Corey to where I want him to go. And eventually, I'll be able to either close him off on the boards and finish with a check, or he's going to get rid of the puck. Go! Jump, 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 Reed. Get an angle. Go, go get ahead of him. Good job. Players, what we're going to work on now is our positioning as defenders in our own end. The way the drill's going to work is Corey's going to be on the other team. He's going to be in the corner with the puck. I'm going to be the defender. So I've got to make sure I've got good body positioning. I've got to make sure I'm strong on my skates. I've got to make sure I've got an active stick moving side to side because Corey's also got a teammate who's going to try to get open. And I've got to make sure that I do everything possible to prevent Corey from trying to pass that puck. Eventually, my teammates will come back and be able to help out or Corey will mishandle the puck 
and I'll be able to jump on him. Okay, Katie. Good job, Paul. That's the way to stay in the middle. Good active stick. Good, she doesn't want to pass. There you go, jump on it. Perfect. Okay, come on back here. That was a perfect example. Paul was in great position. And as soon as Katie happened to fumble with the puck or she lost her balance, Paul was able to jump and we were able to get the puck back. Good job, you guys and girls. Stick checks are very important skills that need to be mastered by players at a very early age. This is the second line of defense once players have learned to position themselves correctly and angle effectively. Hockey players, we want to talk about some stick checks now. What we want to talk about doing is if Corey's got the puck, I want it. It's my puck, I want to get it from him. He's stick handling with it, so I've got to figure out a way to get it. The two ways we want you to practice with are called the lift, where you lift the stick up, or the press. Now, if Corey's got it, what I want to do is come in, lift his stick, and take the puck myself. And now I've got it. I've done my job, I've gotten the puck from him, now I'm able to do something. Now, if he's got it like this, the other thing I can do is I can press down on him, and now I've got the puck again. Now the two times you'll probably see those checks used the most is when you're along the boards and you're taking the player out, you can lift this stick and take it yourself, or you can press down and maybe your teammate can come in and get the puck. But either way, we want you to battle hard for the puck, we want you to decide how much you want it, and do everything you can to get it. Good job there, you guys. Okay, stop for a second, players. Now, this time, the player who's got the puck, you try to protect it, and the other player can try to take it any way he or she wants, lifting or pressing. Here we go. Boys and girls, we're going to talk now about poke checking the puck. What that means is that if the opponent has the puck, in this case Corey, what I want to try to do is knock the puck off his stick. Now this usually happens whether he's coming in on me on a one-on-one -on -one situation, whether I'm playing the rush, or possibly if Corey's in the corner and he's coming out at me, but it's when Corey's got good control and what I want to be able to do is do everything possible to knock the puck off his stick. Now to do that, I can't be standing straight up. I've got to have good skate posture, my skates have to be solid, my legs have to be bent. I don't want my stick way out here because now I'm off balance. I don't want to be standing up here because I'm off balance. I want to be nice and comfortable. And as Corey starts to come in on me, what I can do is just poke check him. Just knock the puck off his stick. I've got it here. Let's say I try to poke check him but he's still able to protect the puck. Because I'm not really overexerting myself, I'm still in good shape here to keep good position and good balance. The other thing that might happen off this is if Corey stays right in front of me, sure I can poke check him, but if he starts to go to the side, then I might have to sweep check him. And what I'll do there is he'll start to go to the side and I'll throw my stick out and sweep check him. We'll give you an example of Corey coming in on me from here. What I want to do is I want to make sure I've lined up my shoulders properly. My outside shoulder closest to the boards is lined up with his inside shoulder. So now as he's coming, he's coming in on me, my stick's out, I'm able to poke check him. He turns around and goes and gets it again, comes in on me again, I've got good gap, I can poke check him again, and I can sweep check it into the corner. Skating, positioning, and angling are all used to direct the puck carrier. Players use their sticks as an active line of defense in attempting to control their opponents. Once players have mastered these first two steps, they're ready to move on to the third step, body contact and contact confidence. Body contact is used to gain separation when a player positions his or her body between the puck and the puck carrier. Body contact must only result from the active movement of the puck carrier. 
Body contact is defined as an individual defensive tactic designed to legally block or impede the progress of an offensive puck carrier. It can be done anywhere on the ice through skating, angling, and positioning. The defensive player may not hit the offensive player by going in the opposite direction or by extending toward the offensive player in an attempt to initiate contact. There must be no action where the puck carrier is pushed, hit, or shoved into the boards. This step in the progression prepares players for incidental contact and helps them overcome the uncertainty and fear of body checking. Let's look at a progression of drills that show ways to teach and learn body contact and contact confidence. Guys, we're going to do a little drill now where we want you to get comfortable and confident in body contact. It's a fun part of the game when you do it right, and that's what we want to talk about right now. What we're going to do is we're going to lock elbows. You're going to keep your knees bent. You're going to get nice and low on them. And what you're going to do is you're going to pop up and just bump each other, getting a little harder each time. Okay? I'd like you guys to try that right now. Partner up. Don't be in a hurry. Really bend down. Get your legs good distance apart. Feel strong on your skates. Okay, bump each other a few times. Okay, good. Now we're going to do that along the goal line here and up center ice. Bump. Bump hard. Next, guys. Let's go. Get started. Not too fast, Reed. Nice and smooth. Go. Really bump now. Bend down, bend down, and explode into them. Good. Finish her off, guys, right to the end. Okay, guys, what we're going to do to start with this drill is have a little activity where we're going to protect the dot. The first way we're going to do it is one player is going to have the puck, and his object is to try to put the puck on the dot. The other player is going to defend. And when you're defending, we want you to make sure you keep some of the key teaching points in mind. Keep your stick in front of you. Try to avoid putting it to the side. Keep it in front of you. That way the guy's further away from you. Then you can always poke check him. You can direct him where you want to go. Have good balance with your legs. Keep a good stance. And keep your eye on the player. And at the same time, you'll be able to see the puck through your peripheral vision. Watch again how Kellum might move out to him, what we're trying to stress here. That's the way. OK, here you go, Paul. Good. Pop out again, Paul. Here you go. That's the way, Kellen. OK, great job, guys. It's very important that players develop contact confidence before they move into body checking. Improving a young player's skating and stability on skates will go a long way in accomplishing that. What we're going to do here, players, is one player is going to skate along the boards with the puck, and his or her opponent is going to come up beside them and just take the puck away from them. We want you to do this with good speed, and we want to make sure that the puck carrier uh, protects the puck and the other person just takes it from them. Go hard. Go. Go hard. Go hard. That's perfect. Go. Get past her, Taylor. Get it up past her. Good. OK, that was good. What we want you to do is skate up beside your opponent and take the puck from them. And sometimes, even in leagues where there's not allowed to be body checking, you're going to be able to bump into people. And that happens sometimes. You guys did a good job. If there's incidental bumping or incidental contact, that's OK. The referee won't call that. That was well done. Body checking is the final step in the four-step checking progression. Now, a body check is defined as body contact primarily caused by the movement of the checker. This movement is usually in a different direction from that of the puck carrier. The checker uses his or her body to stop the attacking progress of the puck carrier and or separate the carrier from the puck. Now, you can see why the first three steps of the progression, which teach strong, controlled skating, plus good balance and approach angling, are so important in learning how to body check. Okay, guys, the next drill we're going to do here is body contact and body checking, and we're going to use the boards. We want you to imagine that you're playing against another player, but we're just going to use the boards as what we want to practice with. What you're going to do is get nice and low, get your leg low, and you're going to explode into the board and pin the player there. So your leg's extending here to give you some force, and this one's nice and bent. 
So right here, you're looking up and you're moving right into the boards. I'd like you guys to try it spreading out along here and then we'll start moving up the boards doing it. Let's see you spread out. Get down nice and low, explode into the boards. Good job, okay, start going here, big guy. Nice, good pin. There we go. Go ahead. Good job, Ryan. boy, Chris, get that leg nice and low. Good, okay there, Reed. Good, give him a good pop, Reed. Good. You guys did a real nice job with that. That's the way to get nice and low. That's the way to explode into there. That's the way to keep the guy pinned. Good job. Okay, guys, this time in this hitting drill, in this body contact drill, what you're going to do is you're going to take your partner out and you're going to hit him against the boards and hold him there for a second. So what we want you to do is get nice and low again and explode into your teammate here. Push with your outside leg, your inside leg's nice and bent, and I'm gonna move right into Corey and I'm gonna hold him there for a second. Okay, now this leg's got all the weight on it. It's pushing right in. Okay, and now if I'm Corey, Corey's not gonna let me hit him. He wants to push back. He wants to push back and that's how he protects himself. So now, if we're doing it, Corey's gonna push out and I'm gonna push in and hopefully uh, I'll be able to hold him for a second. And then now, I we're in good position. I'd like you guys to try it. Let's have the white guys, the guys in the white jerseys hitting the guys in the dark jerseys. Okay, get down and do it right stationary, nice and low and hold them in there. Good, a couple more. Okay, this time do it in motion. Okay, Chris, take them in and push them and hold them. Good, hold them there, good. Go. Okay, good job, guys. Keep going, one more, go. That's a good job there. When you're taking the guy out, make sure you push, you hold him, and your outside leg's doing all the work. Good job. This drill here, guys, you're gonna take your partner out along the boards, and then once you've frozen them there for a second, you're gonna roll and pin, and keep him pinned on the boards. So the same principles apply, get nice and low, pin him on the boards, and keep your stick on the ice, because we always want you to be able to have to take the puck. So if I'm taking Corey, I'm gonna move into him, and then I'm gonna roll him, and now he's got his face to the boards, and this is where all my weight is, right in here. I've got my other knee in between his two legs, because now if Corey wants to go whichever way, he can't move, he can't move. I've got him in good shape, and my stick's loose, so I wanna get the puck. Pin him, and then roll, and get that leg in between. Make sure you get nice and low. One more time. Good. Okay, now do it going up the ice. Get two hits in there, big guy, and we'll go from there. Take him out, slide, roll him, good. Okay, let him go again. Go, good. That's a good job in keeping your stick on the ice, and that's a good job in getting low so you can explode into him. What'll work. Gentlemen, this drill we're gonna work on now is the short check. What's going to happen is the one player is going to skate forward, try to get by me on the boards, and it's my job to place my shoulder into his chest and give him a shoulder check. So as I'm skating backwards, I want to have a good gap with Corey. I want to make sure that I'm forcing him to go along the boards. I don't want him to cut out this way. And when I know for sure he's going to the boards, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and explode into him, and then I'm going to pin him on the boards. So now we're going to start. We're going backwards, I see he's going that way, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna pin into him. And now I can keep him here for a second. Then I'll let him go, and we'll do it one more time. Okay, Ryan and Chris, let's get started. Good job, that's great, one more. Good job, guys, okay, next group. Explode into him, Paul, that's the way. Go by him, Kellen. Okay, good job, guys. Men, we're gonna talk about open ice checking now. What that means is we're not near the boards, we're in the open ice. First and most important thing is you've got good positioning. So if I'm gonna be defending against Corey, first thing I wanna do is make sure I'm not too far from him. So I've gotta have good gap. I've gotta be close enough to him where he can't get away from me by outskating me. I wanna line up his inside shoulder, which is the shoulder towards the middle of the ice. I wanna use my outside shoulder. That way, I can try to direct him to where I want him to go. If he starts to go to the outside, I can move with him, and then maybe I'll take him out on the boards. If he starts to move to the inside, I can protect myself by staying with my shoulder lined up. And then, when I get the chance, I'm gonna stop, 
and try to stand him up with an open ice check. So the way we're going to do the drill is I'm going to back off, Corey's going to come into me, I'm going to move into him, and then he's going to let me push him back, just so we can get confidence in what it feels like to have your shoulder in his chest. Here we go. So Corey's coming into me, I'm in good position, I'm stopping, and now I'm going to push him back, just so I can feel that way. Everyone will get a chance to do that, and the next step, now I'm going to have an open ice check on him. So same thing, I line up my outside shoulder with his inside shoulder. We're coming back, he's coming in. I see that, I stop, and now I can hit him. I've got my legs bent, my back legs got all the power, and I'm just trying to stand him up and knock him off the puck. Okay, Reed, Chandler, line up those shoulders. Good, push him back. Okay, good, next two, Kellen, Paul. Good, push him back. Good, okay, here we go, let's go. Now we're gonna see an open ice check. Good job, okay, good job guys. Reed, let's see a good open ice check here, Chandler. Good, oh, okay, good job guys, that was well done. You guys are turning into good checkers. Continuous drills are needed to help players build up their contact confidence. During body checking practices, emphasize these important points. Have players practice skating with a wide base and bent knees to put them in a strong position for checking. Keep the stick low. Lock the arm under the elbow. Take away the hands. Place knee between the legs. Use rear extension to control the attacker. The attacker's arms and shoulders should be turned into the boards with the chest pinned against the boards. The game of hockey can be physical, but not all checks require body contact. Teaching proper checking techniques is key to a player's skill development. Hockey Canada developed a four-step progression for teaching and learning checking. Positioning and angling, stick checks, body contact, and body checking. Use this four-step approach to improve checking skills and learn to give and receive body checks safely and within the rules. Check it out. Visit the Hockey Canada website for more information. The game of hockey can be physical, but not all checks require body contact. Teaching proper checking techniques is key to a player's skill development. Hockey Canada developed a four-step progression for teaching and learning checking. Positioning and angling, stick checks, body contact, and body checking. Use this four-step approach to improve checking skills and learn to give and receive body checks safely and within the rules. Check it out. Visit the Hockey Canada website for more information. Hockey Canada has created the most extensive set of teaching resources I've ever seen. And as a player or coach, you can never know too much about the game. These DVDs will help give coaches, players and parents an up-close look at the fundamental skills, tactics and strategies of hockey. We all want to be the best we can be. And this set of DVDs from Hockey Canada will go a long way to helping everyone reach that goal. Hockey Canada has created the most extensive set of teaching resources I've ever seen. And as a player or coach, you can never know too much about the game. These DVDs will help give coaches, players and parents an up-close look at the fundamental skills, tactics and strategies of hockey. We all want to be the best we can be. And this set of DVDs from Hockey Canada will go a long way to helping everyone reach that goal.